On this episode, we get this magnum buttoned back together and started up. back to the Auto Obsessive Garage, Chadwick with you again for another installment of Project Hemimag. On what feels like the 500th episode, to tell you the truth, <laughs> we're going to really compress this one down, guys. We're doing a lot, getting the engine back together, getting all the accessories back on there, all that fun stuff, buttoning it back up, and then we're going to go ahead and start this car, and hopefully I put the engine back together correctly. We'll find out. I'm sure I've devastating rattling noise or some kind of really bad screeching or fluid shooting everywhere will tell me if I did the wrong thing. Let's hope we don't see that. Let's get in there. Let's get in the garage. Let's finish this project up because I really want to drive my V8 Hemi. That's all I want. Let's make it happen. See you in the garage. With the head installed, it's time for rocker arms and the whole rocker arm assembly. Now this is a little bit of a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna kind of go over some tips to make it a little easier for you. Keep in mind, this is pretty tricky because you are dealing with the push rods too, which need to be in the right holes and in those cups on each rocker arm assembly. It'll make more sense when I show you. But just so you know, we'll start with the exhaust side and then we'll go do the intake side. The exhaust side has the longer push rod, so that'll help you there. Also, when it comes time to do the intake rocker arms, we're gonna go ahead and put the push rods in first. It just makes life a lot easier. And we also use a bolt to kind of keep the rocker arm assembly in because you're gonna have to lift it up a little bit to slide. You'll see what I'm saying. It's basically a lot of playing around, tightening as you go to make sure that those push rods are firm in the rocker arm assembly. They cannot fall out and you can't put them in the wrong holes. I guess there's horror stories of people doing that. Another thing to keep in mind, the torque sequence for this, of course, just like we took it out, work your way from the inside out and that's gonna spread that weight over evenly to make sure your rocker arm assemblies are installed correctly. Sounds fun? Let's get it underway. I also like to clean the push rods. They look a little funky, a little old dried on oil, and especially being out of the car for so long. You'll see me dip them in fresh oil, wipe them down, and reinstall them. So not a bad idea if you've had the engine open this long to give everything a nice coating of oil. We'll do that before we put the valve covers back on. All right, rock arm assemblies. So again, everything's gonna wanna move around on you, and that makes it pretty fun, to tell you the truth. So what you're gonna do is try to line up your holes. Try to keep... It's literally so fun. Um, and then we're gonna drop it in. So in a perfect world, everything should line up. At least try to get, to get it ballpark, you wanna have everything resting on your springs. You can clearly see I didn't get it right down here, so you gotta pick it up. There we go, at least have them all oriented the right way. If they're not lining up, it's okay for now. We'll have to make a lot of adjustments, I assure you, as we work through this. Another thing to keep in mind too, the rocker arms for intake side will have eyes on them, the letter I, and that'll help you to keep from going insane, basically. <laughs> and now we're gonna secure this, because if you don't, the whole rocker arm assembly is gonna wanna fall off the side of the engine here. And you don't want to thread it too much, just enough so it won't be popping off. You're going to need this plate here to allow for you to get your push rods in here. They have to be nestled in these little cups, all of them. So that's a good start. Let's go ahead and start cleaning our exhaust push rods off and installing them. All right, we've got our rocker arms all torqued down. Here you can see the intake side, which I just did. Boy, there was far too much cursing for this channel. 
But honestly, here's the secret. As you can see, you're working in a very confined space. See a little bit of that push rod coming up here and it goes in the cup, which is on the back side of the rocker. If you can get your fingers in there, good for you. I can't. I used this magnetic tool that I'm using as a pointer right now. And then that's pretty much the secret. Pull up in this direction to kind of pull that push rod out from where it's resting, get it right into the cup, rotate this part of the rocker backwards so the cup is firm on the push rod, tighten down the nearest bolt, and just do that the whole way down the rocker arm assembly. And that's the best way to do that. Now we're all torqued spec, ready to move forward. Again, make sure everything's nestled in there. You do not want to start the engine with one of those push rods out of the cup or tightened all the way. You will hear a delicious racket, I'm sure. So <laughs> make sure everything's good to go. Make sure everything's lined up. Slide your little rings here. These kind of retention rings help hold the rocker in place. So it should butt right up against where the screw is and the holding plate there. Everything should look perfect. All right, moment of truth time. We have the whole assembly put together. We're gonna hand crank the engine and see if everything's moving correctly. Now, if you hear any weird sounds or get any horrible resistance, you know something might be wrong. So this is the first time we're really cranking, most importantly, the brand new cam, new lifters, and make sure we put everything back together here. I didn't remove any spark plugs, so this should give me a lot of resistance. If I don't get a lot of resistance here, something's not good. We should hear air escaping, and we should see our valve springs moving up and down. good sign. You can see the firing order of the engine, which is kind of cool. I don't hear any metallic clanging. I don't hear push rods falling out of their cradles or banging around. And it's really hard resistance, which is a great sign that the engine has great compression. Everything sounds really good. Very cool. Rocker arm assemblers are moving just as they should be. Awesome. Well, at least we put it back together correctly. Well, we'll see when it's spinning at a few thousand RPMs, right? <laughs> Time to put, it's like horrible jokes, right? All right, let's put the accessories back on this bad boy. Before I jump in there and do the accessories and anything else, I think I want to put the valve covers back on. That way the engine's sealed up, at least that portion of it. We'll do the intake manifold last because we have to run a bunch of stuff over the engine here. So, and I still need to clean that up actually. <laughs> so what do you say? Let's just go ahead and put these valve covers back on, huh? Pretty standard stuff here. We've got the old valve cover. And what do we have here? Some lovely brand new Mopar valve cover gaskets to go ahead and put in there. So we're gonna replace the valve cover itself. There's the part number. Oop. Place the valve cover that runs the perimeter and of course the spark plug wells. Let's do it. I'm not going to take you through this process. Pretty basic stuff. So I lied. I'm going to show you some details here. Especially on these spark plug well gaskets. They are flat as heck. The old ones. So here's the new one I just put in. You can see how raised it is. Obviously it's going to compress when you torque it down. But look at the old one there. Almost no lift at all compared to that new one. What does that mean? Well, if you have 140,000 miles on your Hemi engine and you're reusing the valve cover gasket, especially the spark plug wells, uh, probably gonna leak when you go to reinstall them. So get a fresh set every time. All right, friends, it's time to address this dirty intake manifold. So uh, some exterior cleaning, we'll clean it up a little bit. We'll make it look a little shiny and happy and nice. But we saw the intake runners on the heads. And as you can imagine, same story here. Uh, let me get a flashlight in there. Can you guys see how nasty that is? So you can see the injectors right there. Oof. Just carbon city, right? So we'll get that taken care of. You can see it's pretty built up. Clean that up. Clean the mating surface. We got intake manifold gaskets, brand new ones to put on. Never stops. You may ask yourself, what is going on now? 
<laughs> when you put the uh, when you put the 6-1 Hemi back together, there's a few logical steps you need to make. First off, these are the hard line water lines that go to the water pump primarily. So obviously you need to have the water pump on to connect those. They also run under the intake manifold, which means you have to put the water pump on first, connect these, and then put the intake manifold on. So that's the order we're going in. Also, I don't like how these look. They are pretty corroded there. You can see there's a little surface corrosion. So we're gonna clean those up, make them look nice. The other thing I don't like is there are O-rings at the end of each one of these here and here. And it looks like someone experienced a leak at one time. You can see gasket maker there, RTD. So let's go ahead and replace that O-ring and create a good seal there. Okay, so the paint came out fantastic. These hard water lines look great. So let's go ahead and pop off these O-rings, these really old nasty ones and put some fresh ones on. So we're just gonna use a regular pick. Yeah, just what I thought, it came apart. Yeah, it's pretty worn, that thing wasn't really holding anything on. So let's go ahead and put a new O-ring on there. It's gonna be the winner right there. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a perfect fit. There we go. So hopefully when I go to put that back into the water pump assembly, that goes in nicely creates a watertight seal. Here's the kit we used to put the harmonic balancer back on. So you gotta find the right size thread, which for the Hemi engine is the M14 by 1.5 thread. And you wanna put this piece, slide it onto the right depth. This is gonna push up against your harmonic balancer. And this extra long bolt gives you the reach you need to go ahead and slide that balancer back onto the crankshaft. Pretty simple tool. Pretty straightforward to use, but super essential. Now that we have the tool locked onto the harmonic balancer, we're gonna go ahead and tighten it down, which should force the balancer onto the crankshaft. Let's go. Yeah, again, this tool makes it super easy. You just simply crank it through, tighten. You can see the harmonic pulley getting tighter onto the crankshaft. Just keep doing that till it's back down there, and then you're gonna go ahead and secure it so it doesn't move, and use a torque wrench to torque it back to spec. It's water pump now for Project Hemi Mag. So here's the old unit, Look at this old crusty thing. We're gonna obviously recycle that brand new thermostat off of there. We'll be using that again for the new one. Replacing, boom, with this nice shiny unit right here. Now this is the only part that I'm doing through this whole project that's not a Mopar part on the engine. And that's because I couldn't source one at the time of the build. I couldn't find one anywhere. And I think I found a couple weird ones that were super overpriced. Eh. I'm okay with that. I'm gonna go with the trusted aftermarket brand, Gates. Gates makes fantastic products. I've never had a problem. We got all the gaskets we're gonna need, so let's go ahead and throw these gaskets on. They do mount up to the water pump before you mount it to the car. So let's go ahead and get that started. I did it again, folks. Here's my bolt diagram for the water pump. It is pretty complicated in the sense that there are a lot of bolts and they are a multitude of sizes as you can see. So let's go ahead, put this water pump in. We'll mount probably one of these top ones first and go from there. There's our shiny new water pump installed. We still need to attach a few more accessories to that and put the thermostat in. But anyway, you can see our shiny new black coolant lines running down the length of the engine. Those came out great. I also went ahead and at the back of each head you remember there is that one bolt with a ground on it and these cooling hard lines attached to it. Go ahead and do that before you do your intake manifold. It's a lot easier to squeeze back there now, for sure. And if you can see oh, those needle nose pliers, they're actually holding up an air hose. That vacuum hose connects to the back of the intake manifold and that's just keeping it from falling behind the engine because that's kind of a nuisance. Oh, really annoying to keep grabbing that and there is an electrical connector you can see right behind it. Both those items hook up to the back of the intake manifold so they're in a good spot when I put the intake manifold down, we'll be able to access them. So here it is, ready to go. Here's our brand new Mopar intake manifold gasket. So really same part number for both sides so no reason to worry there but you do have to orient it correctly and the way you can tell is you want to line it up but anyway. You've got this interesting section right here, and it lines up with an oil galley. So oil passes through. So you just want to line that up. Also, you want to line up the bolt holes. Bam. So when you do the other side, it would be the opposite, flipped around, because the oil galley, and it's where the oil fill actually goes, is right there. I love how the gasket rubber is hemi orange, so it matches the engine. Bonus points there.
Time to place our new thermostat into the new water pump. Clearly the alternator doesn't go here. So let's go ahead and mount all our accessories up for the engine. We've got the alternator, and on this side we've got power steering and the AC compressor that are definitely not in their correct location. So let's go ahead and take care of that, get them mounted up, and get our engine happy with some accessories connected. Update time, we've got the accessories all on the engine now. There's our alternator. Skip over to the driver's side here and we can spy right on top there our power steering and our AC compressor down in there. So everything's hooked up, ready to rock and roll. Uh, a couple other things we need to do is put the tensioner back on there and the idler pulley on the water pump. And we should be good to go. This is really, this is time consuming still, these final steps. I know I'm kind of skipping over it really quick, so I'm not making this a 300 part video series, but put some time aside to make sure you hook up all your accessories correctly. Of course, the big deal is all these pulleys need to line up. That's a no brainer. But anyway, you're gonna sink some time into this part. That's fine. Here's the plan of attack. We got our condenser resting down there. The first step I'm gonna do is connect the radiator to it. There's four bolts. If you guys remember that when we took it apart. And then I'm gonna to try to adjust it into place while sliding the holding bracket underneath. Finally, we'll put on this shrouding and we should be good to go. All right, guys, we finally have everything assembled inside of this 6.1 liter Hemi engine bay. Looking pretty good, looking pretty clean, eh, decently clean. Everything's there that should be there. So a lot of work putting this thing back together for sure. I can't even say it enough, but boy, putting in that radiator and condenser was a pain in the butt. And connecting all those coolant hoses, yeah, zero fun. All right guys, before we even think about starting this engine, I'm gonna go around with a flashlight, make sure there's nothing obvious I missed. Connectors, bolts tightened, anything. We don't have any bolts left over, so that's a good sign. Extra hardware is always kind of scary, but I'm gonna actually fill up the coolant, pop that off, and then we'll also do an oil change before we start it up, so we'll have fresh oil on its first start with this fresh new can. We should be good to go, let's start it up. Hopefully she starts right up. You're probably gonna see a lot of smoke because we did use a lot of degreaser. So here we go, folks. Hopefully she cranks right back to life. Yes, yes, yes! So we're gonna keep an eye on the coolant level, which will probably drop. As it heats up, it will add more coolant to the system. You guys see the smoke right now? This is all the degreaser is gonna have to burn off. Boy, it sounds really good. It's not vibrating like it used to. You definitely can hear cylinder five is not having cam versus lifter contact. Belt is going smoothly. All right, let's let it warm up. Yeah. 